Oke, okay. good morning everyone. So we're gonna continue our lesson to chapter 5, lesson 4, yeah. Uh, Riemann sums and definition of definite integral. So now you can open your book, page 204. Open your book, page 204. Okay. So yes, on the previous lesson, lesson 3, uh, I taught you about the definition of indefinite integral, yeah. So basically the definition of indefinite integral is the same with the antiderivative gx equals to integral of fx dx if and only if g prime x equals to fx. And then also we learn about several properties that are applicable when you want to integrate, when you want to evaluate the integral. And for today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you about the definition of definite integral. And then on the next lesson, it's still about lesson four, I'm gonna teach you about the application of Riemann sums, which is how to approximate the value of definite integral. Okay? So the goal, the objective of today's lesson is to define the definite integral, mathematically, yeah? Because on, remember, on chapter one, I have taught you about definite integral a bit. That definite integral, basically, verbally, definite integral, definite integral, is actually the, graphically, it means that the area below the graph, right? Definite integral, it means graphical, graphical definition of definite integral is the area below the graph, right? So let's say if I have a function, let's say like this. This is fx. And I want to find the area below the graph in between A and B. Let's say that this is the area. Yeah, so if I want to find the area below A and B, then I will use definite integral, okay? And this is how you write it properly. So the area is equal to integral of fx dx from x equals A to x equals B. So what's the difference between indefinite integral and definite integral in writing? The difference is in here. There is the bound for definite integral. There is the boundary from a to b, but for indefinite integral, there is no boundary. Yeah. So if there is any boundary below and above the integral sign, then actually it is a definite integral. And the result of definite integral is always a constant because it represents the area. Yeah. Meanwhile, the result of integrating indefinite integral is still a function, right? In terms of x plus c. But if you are doing a definite integral, then the result will be a constant, which represents area below the graph. Okay. So. Uh, that's how you write the definite integral properly. Okay. Now, how do we approach, how do we define it mathematically? So, remember when I taught you in chapter one, there are two ways that you can do to estimate the value of definite integral. The first one is uh, counting the squares. And then the second one is a trapezoid method. Yeah, remember, counting the squares and trapezoid method. Now I will teach you one more method, how to approximate the value of a definite integral, which is the method is called Riemann sum. Yeah, this is the method, Riemann sum. Yeah, so basically what is Riemann sum? It's pretty similar with trapezoid method, basically it, is dividing the area that wants to be found into several partitions. So into several partitions. So yes. 
let's say it's going to be like this. Oops. Into circle partitions like that. And I'll at the beginning. Okay. Now, instead of making a trapezoid, Riemann sums make a Riemann sum method makes a rectangle. So, if you want to see your book, page 204, then it will create a rectangle. How high is the rectangle? Well, let's say this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one, five, six, seven, eight. So, there are eight uh, increments, yeah? There are eight sub intervals here. There are eight increments. So, eight partitions. Uh, so, for each partition, we need to pick the sample point. Yeah? We need to pick the sample point and it's gonna be symbolized with C. If you see your book, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. And the way you take the sample point is sometimes randomized and sometimes it's already set. Yeah, Let's do it randomly first. So let's say that this is C1. So it means that from here going up, drag it up to the graph. So this will be the height of your rectangle. Okay, and then let's say C2, it's in the middle. I want to do it in the middle. So I will bring it up until the graph, and then this will be my rectangle. For the C1, C2, for the third one, I want to do it in the most left. I want this to be the height of the rectangle. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah? On the fourth one, I want it to be the most right. That's also fine. I'll take this one as the height of the rectangle. And then let's say for the fifth one, I will put a random, so I will pick a random sample point here, C5, and this will be the height. And then C6, and then C7, and then C8. So this is the sample point, sample point, this is the sample point. So there are eight sample points. There are C1 until C8 because there are eight partitions. Okay? So, as you know, you of course you know that the array of rectangle, the array of rectangle is actually base times height, right? Base times height. Yeah? And let's say that. Uh, this is delta x1. Yeah, delta x1. And this is delta x2. This is delta x3, delta x4, and so on. So basically, uh, the area 1 will be equal to the delta x1 times the height. Since C is the value of x that we take as a sample point, so this will be f of C1, right? And then, for example, if this is C3, then this will be f of C3, right? So basically, the height is actually the value of the function when x is at the sample point. So f of C1 in this case. Yeah, and then also until A2 is delta X2 times F of C2, and then so on, until there are eight of them. So we have A8 equals to delta X8 times F of C8, right? And then uh, by the Riemann sum, and then the sum of all rectangles here will approximate the value of the in the, the definite integral, right? The area total is equal to uh, yeah delta x1 times f of c1 plus delta x2 times f of c2 
until delta x8 time f of c8. Okay. Now, if I want to express it in sigma in sigma notation, remember sigma notation. I hope you remember about sigma notation. Then actually, I can express it as sigma from i equals one until n of delta xi times f of ci, right? So if there are four of them, then there are four additions, delta x1, fc1, until delta x4, f of c4. If there are eight, then it's gonna be like this. There are eight terms. If there are n terms, then there will be n additions, yeah? Now, the idea of the definite integral, the idea of how to find the exact value of the definite integral is basically, remember, uh, I mean, listen to me really carefully, yeah? The idea how to find the exact value of the definite integral using Riemann sums is basically to create as many as possible partitions. So the more I make the partitions, the more precise the result will be. Yeah, imagine it's eight of them. Imagine if I have a, a, a more of them. Let's say I have twelve more of. Let's say I have a, a, a sixteen. I have double. Hold on. Let's say I have double. Let's say I will. To just for the sake of easiness, I will make the delta x the same. Let's say that I have 16 partitions. And I, I create 16 rectangles. Yeah, I create 16 rectangles. Then of course the result will be more precise, right? The more rectangles we have, the more partitions we have, the more precise the area below the graph that we estimate, right? So the idea of uh, calculating or finding, or finding the exact value of the definite integral we use limit. This is where limits come. Limit comes, yeah. So basically, because we, because the exact value of the area, the definite integral, we can get it if the rectangle is very, very, very thin, and there are so many of this thin rectangle. We calculate all the area, we sum all the area of this infinity number of rectangle. So basically, then the area below the graph is equal, instead of approximate, is equal to the limit of n approaching infinity of the total area. Right? Of the total area. Because then if there are 16 of them, so we add all 16 area of the rectangles. If there are 100 of them, then we find 100 areas and then add all of them. If there are infinity, then infinity. So basically, if I, if I want to write it uh, correctly, if I want to define a definite integral mathematically, then the integral from a to b of fx dx yeah, is equal to the area, which is the limit of n approaching infinity of the area, total area, which is sigma from i equals one until n of delta xi times f of ci. So 
So this is where we get the mathematical definition of definite integral. Mathematical definition of definite integral. Yeah, graphic. Graphically, graphically it means I will the graph, but this is how you write it mathematically. Basically, it's the sum of infinity number of rectangles that is made from the graph. Yeah. So that's all for today. I hope you understand about today's lesson. And tomorrow, uh, the next lesson, we are gonna uh, learn about, we're gonna practice about calculating the approximate value of uh, definite integral using uh, Riemann sums method. Okay, so thank you. See you.